are now tapped in. Reject society. Radio. No lanes. Whatsoever. Imperial zone. What's your doubt? Free the Imperial. The Imperial. No lames whatsoever, Imperial's only podcast, tapping in. I got a for real living legend in the building. This nigga's uh, quite a enigma. If you have any access to this dude, this nigga will challenge your way of thinking. I really fuck with this dude. This is, this is the homie. This nigga's... This nigga's assisted me in so many different parts of my career. I really rock with him. I've had the honor and privilege to be featured on multiple of this man projects. One of the first, one of the first individuals that ever showed me any type of love in the industry. I got Nesbitt Phipps, representing from Holly Grove in the building. What's that? Yeah, what is dude, dog? So look, niggas, niggas is going crazy. You got, you got billboards all in New Orleans. One, we start with one, and it looks like about to have two more coming real soon. So, you know, we're taking one, one move at a time. All right. Where, where you got that billboard at? It's on Rampart and what? Rampart and Barrick is the last block. The last, what you can see, is the northeast block of uh, the French Quarters, the world famous French Quarters. If you're riding on Rampart, you'll see it on your right hand side. That's fine. Right past St. Mark's, across the street from, sort of like adjacent to the, the uh, New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Foundation building for Jazz Fest people. That's beautiful. That's black excellence, dog. That's real black excellence. If you black, then you rich. And you got buku power. 100%. 100%. That's a powerful statement with a hint of New Orleans colloquialism. Expound, expound on that. I mean, it's pretty much self explanatory, but what was. And for those who don't, to, 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 for those who don't know, um, buku, buku is the first word for of uh, many, uh, much, or more, or a lot. And, uh, you know, it's just like leftover French jargon. That we use in our uh, in our now English tongue that we speak in the world is now, um, and the, and the way the, the way the sentence is written in a very New Orleans way, you know, that's just how we speak it as a quote unquote proper English, um, you know, it's mixed with the French language, laced with the French language, with the lingo, but it's a very straight straight ahead statement that speaks to the esteem of um, people of African descent. Um, I say it specifically like that because that's what I mean when I say black. And that's what it means to be black, is to be uh, of African descent. And uh, and just know that we have always been the leaders in the world and we're the most powerful, you know. And for whatever reason, whatever, for whatever circumstance you find yourself in, no matter how generations you are removed from being connected to the continent or the source, rather, um, the fact that you are from it means you are of it, and you can always tap into that energy and that power whenever you get it. And most people don't even know they possess it. So that's sort of the purpose of putting that statement out there in the public space. Uh, like, I was, like I tell everybody, I'm having a private conversation in the public space, sort of like eating at a restaurant, you know. And at, at my, t- I'm speaking to the people at my table, but that's who that's for, um, you know. But I, I want the world to see it. I need the world to see. Uh, black people loving on black people, you know, as a statement made by a black man, made for black people, made for African people right in front of your face, and 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 nobody better than I have nothing to say about it. Well, really intriguing, really and truly, that's cool, dog. That's cool. When did what was? When was that like Eureka moment for you? Was that like in a rap? How did that? How did that even come about for you to even? Yeah, in December 2019, there was a, a beat made by these uh, European producers who basically chopped up 
his African chants. And the B was jamming, and I, and I wrote this verse to that, you know. And the final line, the last four lines was, uh, put the put the kagu on them. You know, kagu is like a jinx or a hex. Uh, I'm wishing somebody bad luck. Put that kagu on them, that voodoo got them. My grigri bag got buku powder. If you black, then you rich, you got buku power. And if you black, then you rich, you got buku power. So all three of those, all four of those lines, what the last one is, uh, the last two is the same line repeated. But they all got a French sentiment, you know, kagu, grigri, and the, uh, the buku, you know? That's a fire bow word. Hold oh, love, gotta drop a bomb for that. Nigga ran that, that bitch. Ran that bitch. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, in the rap, I repeat that line twice. Because uh, it sounded good, but the more I said it, the better it. The, I, I felt transformed by it. It's a transformative sentence to say. Um, so, you know, I decided to put it out there. I did. Two months later, it was mine where I put it on a t shirt and I walked up and down saying, Charlie, with it. It got a lot of reception and it caught a lot of people eyes you know white ink on a black shirt real simple you can see it and then uh, I didn't do nothing with it until September 2020 when I I decided to put it on the canvas I posted the first canvas I did with no intention of doing it anymore I wasn't I wouldn't even have I wouldn't even already done with the canvas but my homegirl from Feminine Success Yaya she purchased it she DM'd me and was like yo I want it and I gave her a price and she paid for it on the spot. The canvas wasn't even finished. So then somebody else wanted one. Then another person wanted one. And when I started delivering them and showing that on Instagram, more people wanted them. So, you know, I did 50 canvases in that series of uh, the white paint on the black book, uh, canvas. And now this month I'm doing uh, the gold on the black canvas, you know. And those are moving pretty good too, but they only get available for Black History Month. So uh and, and, you know, from there, somewhere around December, November, December, I you know, I, I got into a situation where thought in public art, um, which is a small I'm the first person to really come through their doors. Uh it's just you know, somebody I know from New York. They developed it down here. They had access to a billboard. Asked me if I wanted to jump on it, and that's what I decided to put on it. And then uh, it was more popular than I understood. I was just trying something with an open door that came. And uh, and the moment it went up, I, I just realized how people, it gravitated towards people. Because prior to that, the only way you knew about it was if you knew me and you followed me. You know what I'm saying? And then, uh, but now this is in a public space where people who, don't know nothing about me. I'm seeing my words, and um, and that's a powerful thing. Now to, to, to kind of backtrack on it, though, and it's funny how the you know, the universe conspires to uh, to make things happen for you. I was having this burning question in my head about how do I communicate with the world outside of my social media. The one thing I witnessed was how fast people get their voice taken away on those platforms, right? No matter if people be a million followers, three million followers, five hundred thousand followers, and then the Mister conducting business and pumping their whatever through it, um, and then just get taken out of out the game. Uzi, Lil Duval, Fashion Bomb, Daily. You, it don't matter who it is, everybody can get hit, right? Right. So, so I. Uh, I was like, man, well, how can I communicate with the world directly in a way that nobody could really affect it? You know what I'm saying? And uh, and then from there, I was like messaging, mirroring, street art, and so on and so forth. And then I began to pay attention to what messaging has been going on in my neighborhood. Some of the most popular messaging that you come in contact with is advertising via billboards, whether on buses, whether on, speaking of buses, I need to do that next, whether right. on buses, <laughs> yeah, no, you uh, do that. Whether on uh, on billboards or whatever, so I was looking around my neighborhood, how to grow, and I was just peeping the billboards that we got, and you know we got a little Wayne though, that's about it. But the billboards was we had a lottery, Taco Vodka, some sort of law. So, yeah, about to say some attorney. Yeah, yeah, 
next to a McDonald's ad, right? So then I'm looking at like, all right, messenger. And the power of messaging and the psychology behind it is that marketing is effective. And based on where that billboard is placed, there's a certain demographic that they cater to. Just like certain programs have certain commercials that cater to the demographic that watch it. Whether age, race, you know, gender, the time of the show, the whole nine. So this is what they're trying to pump in our neighborhood. This is what they think of us, right? right. You know, and this is, these are the things that we are subliminally seeing, whether we want to or not, whether we actually trying to see this or whether we want to remember it or not. Anything that's essential, the essential encounter, it can't be undone. When you feel something, smell something, taste something, hear something, see something. Like, you can't unhear it, you can't unsmell it, so on and so forth, right? Right. So, marketing works. And if McDonald's can convince somebody subliminally that they want a cheeseburger or some spicy nuggets, I figured my deductive reasoning led me to test out the theory that I could get a black person to believe that they're rich and got buku power simply by telling them that. And I could have easily done this via street art, just threw it up on buildings and put it on sidewalks and all that slick shit like that. It's too be expected to show up in a space like that. It's a shame that a statement like this has to be considered <laughs> revolutionary. I was about to say that. Qualify, you know, to, to even qualify to be revolutionary. But it is, given the circumstances. It's a story that we didn't write, right? Right. Um, but to put a statement like that and frame it inside of a commercial space, like a a billboard, for a statement like that to share the same space as McDonald's, put the Womack on them, Crown Royal, Taco Vodka, Louisiana Lottery, if you black me, rich in your buku power. So by doing that, I put that message in alignment with nationally known products and brands. That look a lot different from being spray painted on the side of an abandoned churches. Right. So what happens subconsciously is if a child sees that, and whether child or adult, we're all accustomed to being uh, marketed towards and we receive information and ideas through a commercial lens. Like they played it in the most commercial way, no matter what it is, even in the most sacred spaces, you know. A, child, a preacher presents himself in a commercial fashion, you know? Um, and that's how we receive information. So I, that's how I package that. And, I, you know, I'm basically selling you revolutionary, transformative uh, sentences in a commercial space. Same place you can get, you can, you can, you can find out about the new cheeseburger. You can also find out that you're black and you're racing your people power. So that's where we at with it. Uh, and then on, the, on my site, on my store, you know, I got the apparel, I got mugs, I got products, I got shirts and stuff. And that's what I'm using to pay for these billboards. So not only do the billboard go up, but now that you got your mug, your shirt, you're a walking billboard. So the more this word gets out, the better I'll be all of you. In my opinion. Nah, that's that definitely nah, that's 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 cool, dog. We gotta nah. We gotta we gotta keep expanding that. We gotta keep building that up. Right. So, you know, anybody listening, if you feel like redo, just go to Googlepower.com dot com and copy a shirt, a mug, a print, a canvas. Right now it's twenty percent off for the rest of the month of February, Black History Month, and um, just know that to to purchase this is a revolutionary act because I'm putting up another billboard with. Fucking okay, right, bro. Like for as long as I have known you, dog, I feel like. Dumb long ago, you told me what, what, your, what, your, what your name means, right? But I feel, I've always felt like Nesby Phipps is like 
a, a verb, nigga, for put that shit out in the universe. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like every, I feel like it's been so many instances, dog, where like, man, you just, you just put your foot in the fucking, like, you just, you just do that shit, dog. And I feel like a lot of people don't even, you know, a lot of people be nervous to take those type of steps, dog. But, you, but you, dog, is no matter what, anything that you put your mind to, dog, you just, that shit just unfolds in the most beautiful way, just from you just being like. Yeah, I think that's tight. You know what I'm saying? I, I, the, the thing about the nervous part, I be nervous like a motherfucker when I do everything. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous doing this. I put myself out there. You know what I'm saying? Bold doesn't mean fearless. You know what I'm saying? It just looks, it appears to be fearless because, you know, I, I, nothing stopping me. You know what I'm saying? The fear doesn't have to equal paralyze. Like when I still perform, I've been performing since 2003. I still get nervous when I go on stage. I still get butterflies. The thing is, is the only difference is I see it all the way through. And more than fear or fear less, what most people don't do is see it all the way through. The truth be told, one ain't got nothing to do with the other. If fear stops you, that's because you made fear an excuse for it. It could be an issue. Like, the, the, the what really remains is you ain't do it. Because I'm not what I'll feel. And I, it, it's important to say that because most people are thinking, like, you know, I'm just bold, like, walking out here, just, you know, not giving a fuck. And true, true indeed, I don't give a fuck, but still, there's a vulnerability to putting yourself out there. In any form of fashion. You don't believe me, ask anybody who don't like public speaking or who don't like to read aloud. Or anything like that. It's literally all the same emotion. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I say, I say, I spell all that out to, to let people know that, man. I be nervous as a motherfucker to do everything that I do. You know, I just be doing it anyway. And, and, and to the point where now I look at fear as an indicator. It's like, if I'm nervous about something that I'm doing, it's letting me know that I'm in unfamiliar territory. Like, I'm pushing myself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like. That uncomfortable so feeling. I, yeah, that, like, I, I've gotten comfortable with being uncomfortable. Like, it, like it burned the fucking, to make your muscles grow. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you go to the gym, this shit don't feel good. But you know the results of it, so it becomes, like, your friend. That feeling, that, that burn become your friend. So, like, Getting addicted to tattoos. After a while, that, that fucking that needle was hurting in the beginning. Now you be all over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially when, especially when you see what comes from it. Like all that fear and shit I might have had, and look how many people's lives wouldn't have been touched. But I got grown ups coming to me, thanking me, like you know, like I'm in, like I'm blessing them or something. You know, like the the way people been receiving it has been like beyond me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's literally beyond me. I didn't attempt for any of that, but that's what happened. And it's real. It's like, there's a... It's jam. You know, it's the, extremely jam. Yeah, it's, it's striking the chord in people, dog. Like, I, you know, it's striking the chord in people, bro. And it's almost it's almost oh. as if they didn't know it. You know what I'm saying? It's like... Yeah, like, like something I needed to hear that type shit. Yeah. You know? And, and, but again, that goes back to marketing for McDonald's, right? Like, like, you know McDonald's got burgers. You know what kind of burgers they sell, how much. You know where the nearest McDonald's is to you at all times, no matter where you are. Right. Tell the truth. Everybody know where McDonald's at in their vicinity. And you know the hours, you know how much would you, if you wanted something, you know how much it would cost. But yet, they still market to you every day like you don't know that. So the same thing has to happen with your esteem and understand your place in the world. Gotta remain you Man. Yeah. McDonald's and Sir Billions and they still doing advertisements. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm trying to serve billions too. So I gotta keep advertising. 
Man, that's powerful, dog. So we got Boku Pow. <clears throat> and it's just that simple, just you know, ten words, man. And I don't, now I'm working with people from Morocco. I'm working with somebody in Senegal. Those are both Francophone nations, French speaking nations. They were once colonized by France, just like the way man. And uh, I'm working on getting it out there. The proper way to say it in French is beaucoup de puissance. Beaucoup de puissance? Yeah, that's beaucoup power in French. Beaucoup de puissance. That's fire. Let's get it. I'm here for it. Yeah, bro. So yeah, bro. That's what that's all about. Oh, dog. And, and and for those of you that don't know, this this nigga Feb's really been been try been articulating his agenda. You know what I'm saying? As far as black people being aware of themselves, um, one of my favorite bodies of work um, that this dude put together. Um, is black man for sale I've had, I've had the opportunity to watch this man create this uh album uh, with DJ Fu and um if you if you haven't heard it I, I strongly encourage that you that you check that bitch out ride to that bitch definitely definitely one for black history what we doing black history yeah we really don't do the mud type of shit over here we re- we really not following all that type of shit but black black man for sale is is a really dope body of work um Oh no, my God, they shot my brother down. Trigger finger, bang, bang. That's one of my favorite ones. Shout out to Mike Floss, man. He uh, he laid that hook first, and then I came with my verse, bro. Shout out to Mike Floss from um, Nashville, though. That's the home. Yeah, nah, that's just, that's, that's just cold. Speaking of, speaking of black black power, speaking of buku power, was you, was you able to check out the, the new Judas and the Black Messiah film, bro? Mm-hmm. It was well. It was a well done film. <clears throat> it was done really well. Yeah, no, nah, I, I feel the same. I really, um, yeah, that shit was that shit was really powerful. That shit kind of had me. That shit that shit had me pretty emotional. I ain't, I ain't gonna hold you. They had some parts in there that, that really got to me. Yeah, I mean, it should strike a chord as you put. You know. The thing about making something like that is you got to let it do more than just make you feel something. It, it got to make you want to do something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, just feeling it ain't enough. It's not. It's not, especially if you're black, you dig? Like, you know, a lot of people see stuff like that. and The worst thing you can do is just treat that like it was a movie. Yeah, right. Will will really I think need to be what what I'm eager to to study on and further expand my knowledge on is um like they actual like they actual code you know what I'm saying like they was like them niggas was just so organized bro that shit was just like Lord if nigga had the, like this type of organization with these type of key points and really upheld them shits niggas really would be unstoppable. And really put them in effect, you know what I'm saying? But that's that's something that I'm I'm really eager to study is like just they just they whole like system of operation, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You sure that's available to to, to read out so they dive in so the sooner the better on that. You shouldn't go into next week without knowing what they're about. You know, all you gotta do is check out the ten point program and start there. It was real simple. Just like like the Ten Commandments. It ain't taking long to learn, though. I really like the 10-point program. I'm on that. And you know he was Pete Newton from Louisiana. Yeah, most definitely. I ain't, to be honest, well, yeah, I, I had to do my research. I didn't know where Fred Hampton was from. He was from Illinois. In the movie, I was like, bro, this dude accent. This nigga sound like he from Mississippi or something. What's going on? But he was. Well, his family from his family from North Louisiana, so he's buried in Amesville, Louisiana, which is right above uh, Shreveport. Fred Hampton or Huey Newton? Fred Hampton. Okay. Huey Newton from Monroe. He buried in Louisiana too, though. I'm assuming. I don't think he buried in Louisiana, but he was named after the, the governor Huey P. Long. I believe it was his grandmother that named him. Um. But yeah, most of the people in Chicago from the South, man. 
That was the great migration. Um, you know, that's how Mahalia got up there. She left New Orleans when she was 16, so 19, 20 something, she came up there. Same generation that Fred Hampton parents probably made it up there. You know? So he's just one to be like a first generation Chicagoan, if you will. Love. Left us out and got up in that cold. Yeah, bro, but it was opportunity, bro. People were making money, had careers and all that shit before the Great Depression. And um, and then the, the Great Depression hit. That shaped a lot of shit, you know? That actually what gave rise to uh, Mahalia's, uh, her name, singing. She was in Chicago singing and stuff, and... Uh, the word got around that when Mahalia sung at your service, the tithes and offering went up, even at a time where there wasn't no money to be passing around like that because it was the Great Depression. Nah. So that was, that was one of the one of the reasons why she became popular <clears throat> in a rapid fashion. Because she starts from the south side, and now, now she's on the west side, and now she's in, in Indiana. The, the word passes, you know, the word got around. Yeah, when Haley come and sing, your tired of the offerings go up. And then that, that radius became wider and wider and wider. Now she was in the Northeast and stuff like that. And then came a, a chance to record and then came a record deal. That's cool, bro. See, like, at, like, Mahalia is a beautiful name. And this is the only woman that I know whose name is Mahalia. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Besides Mahalia Jackson, I know no other person named Mahalia. Yeah, that was a name from the time. It's like somebody. It's like somebody being named Doris or Bertha now. Nobody really naming their children, actually. No. Yeah, but like even those names, like Bertha or like Gertrude or some shit like that, like Mahalia still like it's it to me it sounds like a still like a relevant it could be a relevant name like a still a still beautiful relevant name versus like a, mm. a agatha or some shit like that you know? it's certain, it's certain names from that era you'd be like niggas ain't never about to be named that ever you got a chance to check out the soundtrack i did it was cool yeah, I'm fifty fifty with this. they had some they had some real fire joints on there. I'm really fucking with hip boy joint on there. he went crazy yeah, hit boy on, on the run. That boy gonna be around for a long time. Long time. Yeah, nah, of course the Lip and Hoof joint, that's one of my favorites too. And and, and that black yep. car shit. Yeah, Nas had one in the two that Yeah, nah, I'm glad I'm glad uh I'm glad Nas and, and Hit Boy like linked up. That's a fire to me, that's a fire uh Yeah it is. They got any other producers you be fucking with? Huh? They got any who else besides Hit Boy like a like a producer that you really rock with? Uh, there's a bunch of them, man. Um, you know I like Cardo, um, Cardo got wings, Sledge and still. Um, who else? You know I'm still a Crick fan. Um, my homie KC down here. You know, Pell make a lot of his own beats. He's dope. Um, my guy Tafari, he go by Black Dot. Um, you know, you got Player Pizzle, EP from out of Baton Rouge. He just did that money maker for uh, Two Chains and Lil Wayne. Uh, that's my brother producer. He managed him. Um, who else? Um, K Tronada, uh, Sango. Sure. Ski Beats, of course. He's still getting down. P Rock. Spanish Rain. He nice. My man Rain, nice. Chasing Cash. I'm working on an intro for this project. You know, I do all his intros now. That's um, cool. You did that. You did. You did that. Uh, that five point star. Uh, yeah, that three point star. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Three point star. Yep. Yeah, that was that was that was the one, bro. I went crazy. On <laughs> yeah. That. I said, yeah. you can be humble and have things. Yeah, straight up. Straight up. Niggas will be trying to tell the truth, you know what I'm saying? You 
you know, the truth will be fly, man. It ain't got to be out your corner, man. Yeah, bro, you on to something, dog. <laughs> this nigga balls. All oh, this nigga lyrics be legitimately like all pieces, dog. That's crazy. You could just literally put them... Fine rap, man. Yeah. All fine rap. Nah, real life. Nah, that's that's dope, bro. Yo, li- ladies and gentlemen, Nesby Phipps, if you black and you rich, you got buku power. When you rich and got buku power. Yeah, that's all the man is, bro. Y'all, y'all go check that billboard out. Phipps, what's the site? Yeah, man, Rampart, Rampart and uh, Barry is where the billboard is located. The website is bukupower.com. You can follow me online anywhere. And that's the shit. And he has U-I-P-H-I-P-S. You know, I run a straight ahead program. It ain't hard to find me. Nah, check my dog out, bro. Living legend. Yes, sir. It's going down, bro. Look, no lames. Imperials only podcast. I appreciate y'all for tapping in. We're going to be back. This was a Buku Power episode. Huh. Y'all stay safe out there. You know what I mean? If you enjoyed this episode of Imperials Only, please feel free to tap in with us everywhere else we at. You can catch me at readtheimperial.com and readtheimperial on Twitter and Instagram. Also, don't forget to follow the set at RejectSociety.us and Reject Society on Twitter and Instagram. Subscribe to Reject Society TV on YouTube and you all in the game. Once again, it's Reading Imperial Peace and I'll remind you to keep it imperial, stay safe, and help somebody elevate the day. No lines whatsoever. Reject Society. Radio. <laughs> Whatsoever. Imperial zone. With your dog. Free the Imperial.